Holy horse feathers, Griffin still exists. Holy crap muffins, they're actually using the cutie map again. Holy animated deities, Gilda still exists. Well, this is a nice shift, but let's get down to the essentials. Well, firstly, get your mind out of the gutter. And nextly, this is MLP's introduction to the Griffin culture, which is essentially... Rude, insensitive bullies. Yeah, that. By nature, historically. And according to Griffin legend, one day the Griffin King came across the most awesome of all Griffin treasures, and the Griffins all erupted into the Great Griffin War, fighting tooth and nail for possession of the most valuable of treasures until the last- Oh, wait, they- they didn't do that? No, the legendary money-grubbing Griffins, upon finding a great treasure, did not fight to possess it, but instead were inspired to make the Great Griffin Country. <laughs> Apparently, the makers of the One Ring decided it was more trouble than it was worth. Hey, let's try making a treasure that turns beings into not jerks. Either way, apparently after it was stolen by a Ram Cyclops, everyone turned into greedy jerks again, and the kingdom became a shamble mess. But ignore all this, as the episode's really about Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie getting called by the map to repair their relationship with Gilda, which is basically a metaphor on how to fix the Griffin culture overall. That's actually a great idea for an episode. The backstory's a little convoluted, but I always love it when fantasy worlds have their own legends and history. <laughs> Friendship is better than money. That's basically what it is. For a real-world application, it's a bit overly simplified, but the sentiment is sincere enough. There are a multitude of things you could accomplish quicker by just being nice than you can with money. It's actually appropriate how the premiere episode hailed individualism in face of an oppressive equality, and this one outcries extreme individualism and, well, capitalism in favor of community. Makes the show feel a little bit more balanced. Though apparently capitalism works fine as long as you have pride in something. Still, just something to acknowledge, there was a thought brought up by the season premiere that this entire cutie map thing comes across a little crusade -y. Fear not, you ignorant simpletons of wherever we are, horsepun! For now, the princess of friendship has come to steer you from the path of your strange and unnatural ways and lead you to the light of conformed social interaction. And that's not entirely wrong, that's basically what you're doing. Your way of doing things is wrong, our way is right! You live in unsatisfactory dwellings. Here, let us teach you so you may better yourselves. I know that's not on purpose, nor do I disagree with its intended message. That working together especially under these conditions, can accomplish more than being stubborn and greedy. Still, you're just gonna lay the knowledge on them and then just leave? You think that Gilda alone, just by being friendly, can ascend this culture that's been this way for centuries? Or is associating with ponies gonna hurt her reputation further and you guys need to leave as soon as possible? <laughs> this was a great episode for character. Rainbow Dash's laid-back, jilted attitude toward Griffins makes sense, if a little prone to stereotyping, but Gilda has the exact same problem, so it's apparently fine. And Pinkie Pie is appropriately energetic, optimistic, and funny. Overall, she's been handled a lot better this season in terms of humor and likability, but if there's a flaw, it's probably with her. When it came to the rope, she was a little too dumb. But this was really Gilda's episode, and overall, I think that she was handled great. We all knew, despite her tough Griffin exterior, that Gilda was hurt by Rainbow's rejection in Season 1, which this episode vindicates. I originally had a personal theory that Rainbow Dash was likely the one who taught Gilda the value of being cool and tough, so being told off for acting exactly that way by Rainbow Dash was twice as devastating. But it's revealed that's probably not the case, but also not not the case. The implication of this episode is that Griffins by their nature, or culture, are tough and devoid of sentiment. And Gilda, apparently the only Griffin to be sent to a Pegasus town for reasons we don't really know, is the only one to ever obtain the joy of friendship. Okay, so there were probably other Griffins, so did none of the others make any pony friends? Or did the ones that made friends just not return to Griffinstone because they realized how lonely and sucky it was? Actually, that makes sense. I'm gonna go with that. And as Rainbow Dash seemed to be her only friend, it then makes perfect sense how in Griffin the Brush Off, how she felt possessive of her only friend, and still feels superior and resentful toward all other ponies. However, it's also revealed that at first, she was actually very timid and, well, Fluttershy-esque, until Rainbow Dash stood up for her. So, learning the importance of coolness and toughness from Rainbow isn't entirely off the table. Do you think Gilda could have been originally considered too soft for 
super driven as a child, which is why she was sent to a Pegasus flight school as basically a special school. Though that would imply that the Griffins have a racial prejudice toward the ponies, of which there's no evidence of besides Gilda herself, who has more of a personal vendetta. I mean, the Griffins seem fine with ponies as long as they have money. Even now, Gilda's toughness is clearly a front for how hurt she still is from Rainbow and Pinky earlier, and it shows that having learned friendship from Rainbow, her instincts are still leaning that way. Sure, the inevitable character shift was abrupt and obvious once you saw Gilda, but of course it was, because Kid Show in 20 minutes. Also, Gilda apparently a baker, who knew? I guess my only nitpick is, hey Rainbow, you are just as unreasonably stubborn, you say sorry too. <laughs> Well, for the most part, yeah. The single best moment is probably Twilight's passive aggression at not being able to go to the Griffin country. Also, I'm starting to suspect that Gummy might just be a work of taxidermy. I liked seeing the Griffin culture and history, particularly the no outbursts of singing sign. Grandpa Grub was a temporarily entertaining distraction. I loved the animation on the Griffin legends, even if the legends themselves seemed a bit superfluous compared to the actual point of the episode. The season overall has had a huge step up in terms of detailing, character designs, camera angles, and facial expressions. Rainbow Dash's mellow, bitter demeanor and Pinkie Pie's zaniness were both fun to watch, and Gilda's dry, deadpan sarcasm all throughout was just fantastic. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm a griffin? What's your excuse? I know what griffinstone needs! Fewer ponies? And importantly, this time Gilda's attitude is more sympathetic because we understand why she's angry. Yes, she's slightly a product of her culture, but she's also been scorned. And this time her opposition to Pinky isn't just from being angry, but because we can see how Pinky is actively annoying her. Yes, Pinky is trying to help, but we can also see how this can be perceived as annoying. But their back and forth was still pretty entertaining. And finally, that exchange between Gilda and Rainbow Dash during the rescue. And of course, already leading us on with that title, managed to get that one Indiana Jones joke in there. In conclusion, it might not have had the special pop of a truly great episode, but I generally liked everything that this episode did. So what did you guys think of this episode? Comment, like, subscribe, etc. And you stay incredibly shiny, Animaniacs. <laughs>